circumcenter of a triangle and circumcenter theorem, we're at 5.2a. We have two previous videos for chapter 5 that are in the geometry playlist. Since a triangle has three sides, it has three perpendicular bisectors. When we construct the perpendicular bisectors, we find they have an interesting property. When three or more lines intersect at one point, the lines are said to be concurrent. And the point of concurrency is the point where they intersect. The circumcenter of a triangle is where the three perpendicular bisectors are concurrent, where they all intersect. So we have a perpendicular bisector for AB right here. We have a perpendicular bisector for AC right here and one for BC right here. And where they intersect at this green dot is the circumcenter of a triangle. Constructing the circumcenter of a triangle, we can draw a scalene acute triangle on tissue paper and mark the vertices A, B, C. So that's what I did. And then fold the perpendicular bisector of each side. So what we do is we take this vertex A and fold it onto B. So they match perfectly, okay? And we make a nice fold here. And we can take A and fold it onto C. So it matches. Put a nice fold. And we can fold B onto C. So one vertex is on top of the other. We put a nice fold. And we end up with these pink lines that I highlighted where they intersect P. That's the circumcenter. We label the point where the three perpendicular bisectors intersect as P, which is the point of concurrency. And the perpendicular bisector of a side of a triangle doesn't always pass through the opposite vertex. If you look through this, this is the perpendicular bisector of AC. It's going straight up to make a right angle and a right angle, but it doesn't go through B because this is a scalene acute triangle, see? Here's the circumcenter theorem. It says the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So we have our pink lines as our perpendicular bisectors. And if we connect the vertices to P, the circumcenter, they will all be equidistant from the vertices and P, see? So PA equals PB equals PC. The circumcenter can be inside the triangle, outside the triangle, or on the triangle. So for an acute triangle, look, it's down here. For an obtuse triangle, when we draw the angle bisectors for each side, it ends up way out here. It's on the outside. And for a right triangle, look, it's on the hypotenuse. Now take a look at this drawing we have here. This is Bob's house, Emma's house, and Tala's house. And each of their walkways are connected with a vertex to make a triangle. And we draw bisectors for each side, and we find this point in the center. By finding the circumcenter of the three houses, we found a point that is equidistant from all three houses. And it's the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of the triangles formed by the houses. So if Bob and Tala and Emma went to meet, they each travel the exact same distance to the circumcenter of the triangle. And the circumcenter of triangle ABC is the center of its circumscribed circle. So a circumscribed circle is going all the way around the triangle, see? The circle that contains all the vertices of a polygon is circumscribed about the polygon. So it could be a square, a pentagon, hexagon, octagon, whatever, trapezoid, but all the vertices have to be inside the circle. Now pretend that the triangle isn't there. Point P is the center of the circle. Once we put the triangle back, we can see that its circumcenter is down here in the triangle, see? But it's in the center of the circle. Take a look at this drawing. We have all these pink perpendicular bisectors, and we have lines coming from the vertices to P. So our given is lines L, M, and N are the perpendicular bisectors of segment AB, segment BC, and segment AC, respectively, which means in that order.
We need to prove that PA is equal to PB is equal to PC. So we have a paragraph proof. P is the circumcenter of triangle ABC, and since P lies on the perpendicular bisector of AB, PA equals PB. It lies on the bisector, see? That's by the perpendicular bisector theorem. And similarly, P also lies on the perpendicular bisector of BC, right here, see? So PB equals PC, therefore, PA equals PB equals PC by the transitive property of equality. So if you don't remember what that is, if A equals B and B equals C, well then A equals C. They all equal each other, don't they? Okay? So remember the prefix circum means around. So circumcenter, circumscribed, remember it means around. Okay? Now, using properties of perpendicular bisectors, We've got this drawing, we've got the pink perpendicular bisectors, we've got the blue lines coming from the vertices meeting at the circumcenter Z, and we can see that this ZL is 9.5, HK is 18.6, and this GZ is 19.9, and JM is 14.5. So we see these, okay? So... We know that these pink lines are the perpendicular bisectors of triangle GHJ. We need to find HZ, this one up here. Well, Z is the circumcenter of triangle GHJ, okay? And by the circumcenter theorem, Z is equidistant from the vertices of GHJ. And we know GZ is 19.9, and if all these blue lines are equal to each other because they're equidistant, well then HZ equals GZ by the circumcenter theorem. So HZ equals 19.9. Finding the circumcenter of a triangle. So take a look at this. We've got our y-axis and our x-axis and we've got this triangle RSO. It's a right triangle in the second quadrant, okay? and find the circumcenter of triangle RSO with vertices R is at negative 6, 0, S is at 0, 4, and O is at the origin 0, 0. And we graph the triangle according to these ordered pairs. We find equations for two perpendicular bisectors. And since the two sides of the triangles lie along the axis, which was great that it does because it makes our life easier, we use the graph to find the perpendicular bisectors of these two sides. So look at the perpendicular bisector of segment RO right here. If that's a negative 6, well, then the bisector would be at negative 3, half of it, wouldn't it? So X equals negative 3. And the perpendicular bisector for OS, if this is 4, then the bisector would be at 2. So Y equals 2. So here's the same drawing, so we didn't have to stretch. So now, number three, we find the intersection of the two equations, x equals three, y e negative three, and y equals two. And the lines, x equals negative three and y equals two, intersect at negative three, two, the circumcenter of triangle RSO. And it's a right triangle, so see it's how it's on the hypotenuse? All right. Our next lesson is in center theorem and inscribed circles. That's lesson 5.2b. Do me a favor and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.